Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode 7 of my tutorial series for RimWorld version 1.5. So today I want to go a little bit deeper into the whole topic of animals, and I took the liberty to fast forward things a little bit and complete our outer defense lines. So all of the walls are built now, and the main topics that I want to work on today will be animals in a deeper sense and we're going to work a little bit on extra electronics energy production and researching things so we're getting now more and more into the mid game stage of our base so while i was fast forwarding things we have had a visit from a bulk goods trader so again we want to have our best social dude do this and if you want to find that person quickly you can always mouse over these boxes and you see there their skill level so shield is definitely the person to send there bulk goods traders are among the most desirable ones they basically buy everything and they sell quite a lot of different things at the same time these are also either originating from the primitive or for the from the modern faction these came from the modern faction so double profit first off we can now sell off some of our goods bulk goods trader do they do buy pretty much everything we have earned ourselves some ambrosia this can be used as a soft drug or it can be used as a nice trading good. We're doing the latter here. We're also going to have the ability to buy more books. So books are very, very interesting. Every book has a little bit of a different effect and you have to check on out what they, uh, what they here do. And these are really interesting in so far as you can't make them yourself and it is really really interesting or i don't know if we can write them by now that's something i need to recheck but uh, these offer various bonuses and therefore check them out they are quite costy costy ish what we are mostly after here is one reinforced barrel we're going to need that to make ourselves a mortar mortars are just really awesome to have so we are going to sell away those plain leather pans the awful ones and yeah down here you see a couple of things that they won't buy they won't buy wood so this is really one material that is not useful for trading but as you see here they would be also buying our food and or leather or steel so many different things that we can utilize later down the road we're also going to buy ourselves 200 pieces of cotton and i shouldn't have hit the enter button so that's uh, what what you get if you hit the enter button don't do that as you obviously see so ambrosia is sold 200 cloth we buy and that's that. So the cloth will be used for many di different things later down the road. The most important thing that we got to do now is that here we have still these work orders open for the dusters. And I want to make sure that we make these out of anything but cloth. The cloth is a material that we're going to use later down the road for other things. Some work some constructions can only be made with cloth and therefore it is a really valuable thing to, to to have that stuff so we're immediately going to order somebody to hold it back there okay so the bulk goods trader also had a couple of animals for sale so if we'd be buying them they'd be sitting here but since we're sitting in the tempered forest there is really not that much need to to buy ourselves animals so first off every animal is tameable every animal you can have your pit, pet grizzly bear you can have your pet raccoon you can have your raccoon farm you can have your grizzly bear farm you can do whatever you want in this game as long as you manage to tame these critters somehow cougars and gazelles all of them 
Some animals have more unique skills than others. We're going to deconstruct that uh, fi wood fire generator. By the way, this is uh, when they are broken. We don't want to keep that. We don't need it. So when you click an animal here into the info box, you see all the necessary information that you want to have. The most important thing here is always the minimum handling skill. This defines how much animal skill somebody has to have to tame these. Here you see a ton of different information things. Here also very important to point out wildness. So the more wildness, the harder they are to train and to tame. Basically, it's a little bit of a difficulty level that you can add on top of that. You also have a readout about what they, uh, what these animals would produce. So here in this regard, we can now see how much meat per day we'd be getting if we'd be growing them just for the meat gains. So the cougar obviously doesn't drop off too much meat, but let's look over to the muffalo. So the muffalo, not only does it yield way more meat per day, it also yields muffalo wool. So you also see how much muffalo wool you get there, including the value of that wool. So a muffalo is, as you see here, a very, very powerful animal in terms of economic use. They also come either as pack animals or not. This is also very important to note. Pack animals can carry stuff in our caravans. The most easy to uh, pick up and handle animals out there are alpacas. So alpacas are really, really awesome. They have pretty much no wildness. Well, it's very low wildness. They need almost no handling and they yield wool. I mean, not that much wool, but uh, it's uh, very close to the... Um, one of the buffalo and as you see there they don't yield that much meat but what's really awesome about them is they are pack animals so i marked them now on my list to get tamed you could do that now for all of the other animals what's also worth noting is there's egg laying animals as you see here like the turkeys if you want to utilize that you will need to set up egg boxes so egg boxes they uh, they are necessary that your egg laying animals can safely lay eggs and uh, well that's that after that you have to decide whether you store your fertilized eggs in the freezer you find them here in the raw food section there's unfertilized eggs and fertilized eggs so if you set it up like that forbid them in your freezer the fertilized eggs will be stored like here. That means animals will ultimately hatch out of these fertilized eggs. If you put them into the freezer, they'll eventually die off and can be eaten just as any other food. It depends on your own preferences whether you want to uh, have more of these animals or not. So that's pretty much the, the basics of that. What's really important to note as the last thing is that animals have a level of trainability. This ranges from down uh, up from advanced down to none. So advanced trainability means animals can be trained to fight for you, carry stuff for you, and save people. There is intermediate, if I remember correctly, that is only allowing them to train for combat. And I think that's that. I, I can't remember exactly anymore. But basically, the more trainability, the more, the more things they can learn. And it goes as far as you can train yourself or grow yourself. For example, the grizzly bear army trained them to be combat ready and have an entire swarm of grizzly bears fighting off the enemies for you. It's all possible. It's a sandbox game, it's up to you. I can only say it's a crap ton of work to get these uh, tamed and trained as they have a pretty high handling skill and a pretty high wildness. So if you want to pull it off, it's badass, but it's also a lot of work. So the Grey Lake pack are 
raiding us. Here it is only a guy called Cockroach attacking us. So here, let's check on out how our defense system now works. It's a perfect opportunity to do so. So first off, Cockroach tries to enter our base. And now exactly what I uh, told you is happening. He's cutting corners. He doesn't run into these traps as of yet, but you will notice that... Wait a sec. You are, you are acting weird. So Cockroach is obviously looking for an entry point. Let's see what he'll do. But as you can see, you have now all the time of the world to prepare yourself. Ah, yeah, he's trying to destroy the Steely. I claimed them as mine, and uh, now he, he spotted something that he can destroy. I'll let him do that. It's uh, none of my business. Right now, by the way, these guys here, if any raider comes close to a trading caravan, they'll fight each other. And you gotta be really careful about that, as your traders will open fire whenever they uh, get close to something like that. And as the standard setting is friendly fire enabled, you shouldn't be in the line of fire of that. I just want to give you an example. These guys are armed to the teeth. They got revolvers, shotguns, bolt action rifles, another uh, pit auto pistol, frag grenades, pistol and these guys that's an incendiary launcher you don't necessarily want to be in the way of that so we got ourselves our first alpaca so as you see there conway and shield are taming that it is not a smart thing that i'm doing right now to to, to have a a taming operation while there is a raider abroad but uh, as you see there if if it wouldn't have been for these funky steelies that i uh had there Cockroach would have uh, done that right uh, off the bat. So here you see now the demise of Cockroach. Wait. It's this guy. Yeah, so just like I thought. Cockroach is a nimble guy. He has only a very, very low chance to spring traps. So that's why he hasn't been hit by any of these. But as you can see, it's a perfect demonstration. Cockroach is also now w walking a lot slower because he's on the fortifications. And now he gets to say hi to the armed forces of the trading caravan. I pity Cockroach a bit. There we go. I didn't go in between that because I really didn't want to be in the line of fire here. Because of things like these. The, the, the one of them was uh, w w was like I, I need to try out my frag grenades now, bro, and uh, so he did. Never get into the line of fire of a trade caravan. It just doesn't pay off. Worst part about that is they won't care at all if one of your people dies, but they will be super pissed if you accidentally just nudge somebody with a bullet. So. Did I already mention that I have all a friendly fire turned off permanently on my personal private runs? <laughs> Anyways, you can do that as well if you are bothered by friendly fire like I am. Anyways, so as you see now, the uh, alpacas are in here. What is now important to note is that in here we have now less nutrition growth than consumption. So our animals will eventually starve. That is a really, really sad thing, and therefore we need to take care of them. This is done easiest by building up a small shelf. You set it up there. A small shelf is a, is a container that can store a certain something. Their big advantage is it counters the deterioration of things being stored outside. So, in a nutshell, stuff that is packed onto the shelf is not going to be uh, suffering any spoilage. So, first off, I'm going to clear all, then I'm going to call this out as an important packing spot. So, we are now able to just decide to... let's uh, put down some potatoes. All right. So, potatoes. Now you can even right-click there to... Uh, or does already somebody hold it? So eventually now the potatoes will be hauled onto the small shelf. You can always check out what your animals are eating down here in the diet section. 
Obviously, you can't create your animal's kibble, and that is the easiest way of feeding your animals. Or, alternatively, we could also widen the pen. As currently, our pen is really just very small, and therefore, there is not much grazing room. That is, by the way, why the alpacas are not getting enough food. So, if we'd be doing something like this... Let's see. Ah, well, we can. I pressed C as a hotkey to cancel here. So we're going to go down here like that. Doesn't block the wind turbines. If you have wind turbines around, it is always very, very important to take care of that. So as you see here now, the potatoes are spoiling due to the lack of refrigeration, but they are not deteriorating anymore. So this is a way how you can feed your critters. The downside is that you're setting up way too much outside there if you're doing it like that. As you see there, they are storing up to three stacks of stuff outside there. So I personally wouldn't be recommending that as a permanent solution. For the permanent solution, try to have as much grazing spot below your critters as possible. It's way better. But in times of crisis, Sometimes you just have to feed your animals manually, and I've made excellent experiences with this uh, course of action here. So you can also store um, simple meals. Vegetarian simple meals can be eaten by animals. So what I already did several times was put my own colony on lavish meals and only use the simple meals for feeding the animals. You just set up a low count of simple meals that are ought to be readied and then whenever the animals have eaten their simple meals <laughs> new ones will be cooked it's a strategy that works on out pretty decently and only recommend all right so i wanted to talk a, la a little bit about a add-on that we can do for the wind turbines my personal favorite so solar generators can be fit between the wind turbines without bothering them. The, this is a pretty n nifty interaction, unless it, didn't, uh, uh, unless it got fixed away in this version, but uh, and it's still there. So the solar panels are, are pretty flat. You, you gotta imagine them as a flat thing, and we are using here the deconstruct command. And therefore, wait a sec, we need a fence gate. Mm. And therefore, they don't uh, obstruct the the wind turbines, which is excellent, which is exactly what we want. All right, so we have now expanded the pen, and for this regard, I am focusing Conway now into deconstructing that. And this is already enough, as you see here. We opened up this uh, gap there, and now you see nutrition growth exceeds the nutrition consumption so ultimately it is up to you how you want to do that you can feed and host your animals in many many different ways it's your personal choice how you want to do that i can only show you the ropes here the general thought behind animals is animals can be used for so many things. You can use them just as a add-on for food, which is always a good thing. Here I love to use, for example, alpacas as pack animals. I'm a very, very big fan of having animals as uh, caravan caravaneering animals. As It is really, really good if you want to do large-scale trading. And since I want to have a um, a, a, a episode about caravaneering as well. This was a must-have. So um, right now excavating more components and more steel as the solar generators they are quite a costly bunch but this kind of construction that we got here to wind turbines and four solar generators most of your bases will probably never meet, need more than that. It is just that simple. So as you also might have noticed, the small shelf is putting up space efficiency to a new level. 
we can obviously use the interior of our freezer much, much more effectively this way. So using these shelves has another bonus. So for the beauty rating, items that are littered around on the ground are considered to be really ugly. And uh, the shelf, well, it's less ugly. So in terms of beauty, your colonists have this beauty need bar. The more beautiful your colony grows, the happier they are because of beauty. This uh, goes the other way around, obviously, as well. So, a Manhunter pack of squirrels. So, this is effing ridiculous. So, yes, so Manhunter pack is a random event that can just happen. And it can happen with every animal. Let's see. Literally every, every animal. So the manhunting squirrels are really not any big danger, but what's interesting about manhunting animals is they lack the ability to find an entrance to your base as as quickly as, as a human force will do. So these will now meander around here, and eventually there might be a chance that they will be gravitating towards there, but there's a high likelihood that they they just won't. The point here is, and that's the problem about it, is your people can now run accidentally into these. While it is pretty harmless to run accidentally into a bunch of uh, squirrels, this can be entirely different if there is a manhunting pack of cougars or hyenas or... Uh, you, you get the idea. So... It is always a quite decent idea to, to tackle them head on. They also will go away after a while, and manhunter animals always suffer from scaria, so they die off in a couple of days. This also makes their bodies go rotting when you when you are around them, uh, when when you kill them, so you not necessarily are able to, to get yourself any food out of that either. By the way, if you are bothered by uh, dead raiders lying around, you can either build them graves or crematorium to, to torch their remains. We're also going to work on our prison now. So the other episode, I built this room here as a prison. So we're going to fit in a bed and we got to claim the entire site here. As you see there, the other damaged walls weren't claimed by us yet. So, we gonna be needing some powered content, hidden content, and back to the power content. Alright, so we're going to build a bed in here and the sarcophagus, we're going to deconstruct that. The interesting part about a prison cell is you not necessarily want the most freaking ugly prison cell out there. Oh boy. Meninia is being hunted by the uh, by the man-hunting squirrel. So that's what I've been talking about. Luckily Furious is around the corner with his knife to stab the critter. But uh, yeah, these things, like I said, random animals of these uh, can be really, really bothersome. The other squirrel has now decided to go into the uh, corridor here, so Conway can probably greet this creature with uh, proper firepower. Alright, so as you see there, they are both rotten corpses, and Menino got really beaten up by this thing quite badly. Menino is also shivering from hypothermia. That is because winter is coming, and that bad boy here doesn't really have proper clothing. He's also littered in squirrel scratches. So, we haven't config configured him to be properly behaving, so let's change that. And now, draft and undraft. Nobody who's dying in a couple of hours because of bleeding wounds has to work. They have to go to bed. This is absolutely vital. Also, we need to make sure that he's not dying from the cold. 
So we're going to set up a heater inside here. If you don't have a heater at hand, a campfire does as well. That is uh, pretty simply put. So we're going to work on the heater and we're going to see shield is our doctor in this regard. And we're going to tend to this guy. In a situation like that, don't lose any time. 10 hours death time are really not much left before he's going to be dying. And the hypothermia here is also really a problem. Menino will suffer from hypothermia really, really quickly because he's literally only wearing a t-shirt and pants while it's outside really growing cold. So we're going to fix him up with the meds and plug in a heater. Since we have also installed vents, the heater will now spread the warm air through the entire apartment suite. That's why we did that in the first place. So, well, I think this illustrates really well how lethal combat in RimWorld can be. This was just one squirrel. All right, one, one, one wild squirrel. In all honesty, Menino is a non-violent person, therefore he was unable to fight back properly, so anybody else who was a, would have been able to fight back probably would have killed that thing way before it would have been able to do some, uh, some severe injuries like that. But I think it shows quite nicely that even a squirrel can inflict quite lethal injuries in this game. So, I'm harvesting here the plants outside here, and we are also calling the ibexes out for hunting. They are lodged in here into my base, therefore they'll have a lot of trouble to run away. Also, I want to notice, uh, I want to note that the alpaca, with their wool, they will be automatically sheared by any colonist who is assigned to the handling job. So, once the wool is ready, it will be, it will be done. So, we have a party, but uh, the party is cancelled because Conway is on a mental breakdown. As you see there, the people hate their rooms. That is quite heavy, considering that these rooms are pr uh, properly geared out. They are freaking out about the rooms because the rooms are dirty. That's why. Dirt is really a very, very nasty modifier in terms of happiness and all those things. And if you don't have a dedicated cleaning person, that means somebody who has cleaning as a top-notch priority, you will quickly notice that dirt does go out of hand. It's always like that. Okay. So we now, I think, know pretty much the basics about animals. What I didn't mention here, which is really, really important too, is everything which has a chance to fight back when tamed is dangerous. As you see here, the muffalo though, most interestingly, you can tame them with no risk of repercussion, but you can't hunt them with no risk of repercussion. Always check out this part here, Animals that have a chance to fight back when you're tra when you're taming them should never be tamed automatically. You select them to be tamed and then you right click them with your trainer. And then you set up a couple of people with heavy guns behind your trainer to shoot that thing over if it goes to bite your trainer. And then you pray to what's whatever is holy to you that your trainer will not die on the way of running down the animal that has gone crazy. That's pretty much how it boils down. So you see here we are taming animals left and right. Here I tamed myself a breeding pair. What's really important to note is that there is a auto slaughtering tool allowing you to fix up how many adult animals of any type can there can be there at any time. So I'm allowing here a total of two adult animals of each type, 22. And uh, you can, of course, configure that to your own liking, but uh, I strongly recommend to use the auto slaughter tool for any colony that hosts a bigger amount of animals that can actually reproduce. 
Otherwise, you can, of course, handle it manually. It's always an option as well. I'll leave that up to you. All right, that ends the animal episode. I hope you found it helpful. Animals are an amazing topic in this game. You can do so much with them. It's one of uh, my, my favorite parts of the game. And I hope I was able to transport the a couple of ideas, possibilities, and all those things between the lines. So, next episode, we're going to go over... I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet what we're going to go over next. But we're definitely going to expand our base here a wee bit. Get ourselves a couple of bedrooms up. And I'll see you all on the next episode. Drop me your comments down below. I'd be all happy to hear back from you. And of course, consider leaving a thumbs up. Subscribing is always all nice. And check out the description box. You'll find my links to Discord, to Twitch, and of course also to the supporting thingies like PayPal, Patreon, or Buy Me a Coffee. Also, there is a channel membership system that you can navigate towards too. Either way, I want to thank the supporters of Icon Gaming really, really from the bottom of my heart. And I want to thank you out there right now watching this video, especially or just watching it until the very bitter end. I deeply appreciate and see you guys all next time. And I already know what it's going to be. We're going to talk a little bit about the seasons and winter, and especially because winter is coming. See you there. <laughs>